On the 12th of April 1995, and after five months of searching, it was along this stretch of the Rochdale Canal here in Hebden Bridge that the grim discovery of Lindsay Joe Rymer's body would be made. person who murdered my little girl is still out there. When Lindsay went to buy the box of cornflakes, I had no idea I would never see her again. And I've been deprived of saying goodbye to her. And it hurts that. It really hurts. It's not a name. It's a person. Her name is Lindsay Jo Reimer. And she was 13 years old. And she shouldn't be dead and I want I want information and I beg people for information. Now whilst we were researching this story today me and Vicky we always use Google Maps for points of reference and to see the locations where these stories take place so this this case has been no different and we used Google Maps last night just to see the actual distance where young Lindsay the walking time, the distance time between a house and the trades as well as um, the shop, the spa in Crown Street. And I think looking at it, it was between 10 and 15 minute walk from a house, so it wasn't actually that far. Now me and Vicky, we've walked along the canal towards where Lindsay's body would ultimately be found five months later. And from the start of the canal to Cambridge Street is literally five minutes. But like I said, the path that Lindsay would have taken would have been on like the main roads, if you will, because there is quite a high wall at the top end of Cambridge Street. And I don't think she'll have climbed over to get on canal path to make her way to the trades. We could be wrong, but it's more likely she made her way along the main road, which therefore does take between 10 and 15 minutes to get there. Now, we do know for a fact that she got to the trades. She met her mother. Her mother offered a drink, a soft drink, before she went to the shop. Lindsay turned that down. She wanted to get to the shop and then back home as quickly as possible. We know she got to the shop and she was last seen at 10.22 p.m. It's all caught on CCTV. And like I said, something terrible happened after leaving the spa and making her way home. Now, a lot of people have theorised that it's probably somebody she knew who's picked her up in a car and obviously they've made their way along this stretch of road here to where a body would ultimately be found, like I said, five months later. Now we're going to get into that side of the story shortly. Now one of the other things that always seems to stick in mind is Geraldine's mother. Now she always regretted at the time that she never checked in on Lindsay when she left the Trades Hotel and she got back home that evening and it's always lived with her ever since. Now on the evening of Lindsay's disappearance, Lindsay's father Gordon was on the telephone, he was making a telephone call at around quarter to ten that evening. So Lindsay had obviously left the house unbeknownst to her father or her father might have seen Lindsay leaving and obviously didn't think too much of it. Now Lindsay, like I said, she made her way to the trades club where she met her mother, uh, Geraldine. And Geraldine asked her if she wanted a soft drink, I think lemonade or something like that. But Lindsay said no, she, wants, she obviously just needed a bit of cash. 
so she could go to the spa like i said for some cereal and then to make her way back home now her mother gave her the money and said to her like i said to make sure she gets home straight away now later that evening obviously lindsay's mother had left the trades and she's gone back home and she she remembers getting in the house and not thinking too much of lindsay and where she could possibly be because obviously she thought she'd just been to the the spa shop to get the cornflakes or the cereal and then she would have been home fast asleep in bed so she didn't go to the bedroom to check or to disturb her this was a, um, a big mistake and geraldine's own words it was something that she had to live with for obviously the rest of her life now it was the following morning when lindsay had failed to attend her duties as i think she delivered newspapers but she failed to get up that morning now when her mother went into the bedroom and obviously realized that lindsay wasn't there that is when panic set in now i know some people say well where were her father when all this was happening the night before now gordon he was on the telephone he was making a telephone conversation or a telephone call at around quarter to ten that evening when lindsay had left the house so she never disturbed him and he didn't see lindsay returning home now again he could well have been on the telephone he may well have gone to bed i, I honestly don't know that answer but the fact is <clears throat> the fact is lindsay never returned home on the 7th of november 1994. the following morning on the 8th obviously the authorities were informed of lindsay's disappearance so such parties were quickly started up along the actual canal the rochdale canal the river banks the main roads places were searched unfortunately lindsay she was never discovered Now as the hours, the days, the months went by and there was still no sign of Lindsay Reimer, rumours of all kinds started to speculate that first of all, that she was unhappy at home and she may have ran away. Even her father, Gordon, was, or was fast becoming one of the main suspects in his own daughter's disappearance. Now there was a television show called deadline that um, channel 4 aired just shortly on just before lindsay's body would be discovered for five months later and in it gordon is being interviewed by the tv presenter and a lot of people seem to think that he just didn't have a care in the world he was smiling he was laughing now gordon himself had to come out and basically explain himself to the public to the press to the world why he was laughing or why he was smirking in that interview and it simply came down to nervousness you know at the end of the day people react differently to to different things in life and gordon's defense mechanism was simply to to try to be jolly to try to put on a, a, a show if you will put on a face not that he was guilty of anything but it was just his way of coping and even his wife jerry had to come out and defend her husband saying that behind closed doors obviously he was absolutely distraught by what had happened and this this is the thing that people don't see off camera and behind the scenes but yeah without a doubt there were many accusations uh, circulating within months of well within the first couple of months of lindsay's disappearance I was also, I mean, as I said in the Yorkshire Post this morning, being some kind of whispering campaign. Now, obviously, that must be devastating. To cope with what we're feeling and to have then that on top of it. Gordon did the press things at first because I was totally incapable of doing it. And what he got back 
is despicable. And I say to those people that anyone who knows Gordon knows that that is a load of absolute nonsense. People are vicious and nasty if they can think things like that. They certainly don't know Gordon the parent. I have every confidence and the police have every confidence that whatever has happened to Lindsay has not happened internally. Now it was here where on the 12th of April 1995 the body of Lindsay Jo Reimer would be discovered. And it was discovered by two workmen who were working on this actual stretch of the canal. They were doing some repair work. Now, whilst they were, and I think it was in this area perhaps, whilst they were dredging it, they noticed something appearing in the water. And at first they thought it was a sheep, the carcass of a sheep, because these things do happen. As you can see, there's fields around and sheep do get trapped. However, it only took a matter of seconds before one of the workmen, Andy Glover, he realised instantly that what they were seeing in the water was the body of Lindsay Reimer. Everybody in Hebden Bridge obviously knew of the disappearance, so instantly his body shook and he realised that what he was looking at was, unfortunately, the remains of poor Lindsay. And this is Rawdon Millock number 12. Now, Lindsay's body, obviously after she was removed from the canal, she was found to have had a 20 pound rock attached to her body. So obviously she was fixed to the bottom of the canal bed, if you will. So somebody who had done this wanted to make sure that Lindsay would never be recovered or discovered. Now this is Rawdon Mill Lot 12. And like I said, it was here where on the 12th of April 1995 Lindsay will be uh, finally recovered and like I said it must have been an horrific horrific time not only this time of the actual investigation but the four months prior someone out there that knows what happened 22 years the family and the community have had to go through this it's so unfair on everyone when someone could come forward and could give us that information I'm sure that person is in Hebden Bridge Vicky has just highlighted a good point about Lindsay's disappearance and ultimate murder. And we have to, re to mention the fact that there was no sexual motive as far as the police were concerned. When they did the autopsy, they did the checks, she was still fully clothed when they re recovered the body from here in the Rochdale Canal. There wasn't any sign of any sexual misadventure, if you will. Um, there was no attacks on her sexually. It wasn't sexually motivated is what I'm trying to say. It seems that whoever took Lindsay at some point between leaving the spa shop in Hebden Bridge and to her being found here four, nearly five months later, it seems that something happened, something transpired. Now, the most logical explanation as to why she went missing or how she went missing, I should say, not why, is the fact that somebody perhaps in a car had picked her up and promised her a safe trip home and she took that that opportunity now that being the case you have to question was it somebody she knew or was it somebody the family knew which then begs other questions and other worrying concepts in the fact that if it is somebody she knew that means that somebody lives here or lived here in Hebden Bridge 
and perhaps they still do to this day. They're harboring such a horrific secret. If that person or persons no longer lives here or they may have passed away since then, somebody they may have known is still harboring that secret of what happened on 7th of November 1994. But it does seem likely that she did take a lift. She got a lift in a car to make her way here or she somehow ended up here where her body would ultimately be found. Now at the time of Lindsay's disappearance and obviously murder, there used to be a mill here. And it was a, it was a mill that was being used, it was well lit. Now me and Vicky's just been having a quick look around to see where the murderer or murderers of Lindsay would have come with her body. Now there is a bridge of sorts just across here. Now obviously it's speculative, I know, but they may well have taken Lindsay's body from somewhere in this area, carried her along this pathway to the end, where obviously straight forwards into the canal. However, there's also another way which is in that direction, which is a bit further to walk, but like Vicky said, to carry a lifeless body, it would take at least a couple of minutes from an entrance or a beach in that direction and along this pathway to put her here. So we think she, she has come in this direction, around and then into this section of the, the canal. Um, the forensics, the police would eventually also detail that the, the, the rock or the stone that was placed on Lindsay's body to pin her down was part of the canal itself. So she was most certainly, well, the theory is she was most certainly killed somewhere around here when the mill was here and her body was taken and disposed of. Now, Vicky just asked, how long was it did the police think her, her body was placed in the canal from the minute she went missing? Now, the police also seem to think that she may well have been killed within minutes or at least within an hour or two of her last being seen in Hebden Bridge in the spa shop. And her body was transported, or she may have been transported to the mill here where an attack took place, she was killed, and then, like I said, her body was placed into the canal here. So this is a stretch of main road. We believe Lindsay and her abductor or abductors would have taken. They would have come this direction and then they would have passed the old Woodman Inn pub and on the left is where the old mill used to be. And it's there where we feel that is where Lindsay would have been murdered. But like Vicky's just said, if it was a case where she was abducted and she was brought in a car, did she know the person or pe people who were driving the car at that time? And there's a good chance that she probably did, or the person themselves would have been known to the family at least. So she felt safe, she felt secure that she was going to be giving a lift home. Now something must have happened in that car, and like Vicky said, was there another motive to abducting Lindsay that evening, the person, and let's just presume it was a male. So if it was a male, it was a man, a young teenage man, an adult man, did he have other motives in mind? Was it originally going to be a sexual motive? Was he taking her to the mill where he could do horrible things before killing her? Or did something happen in the car which angered the abductor to the extent where he snapped, he took her to the mill for whatever reason, like I said, if it was sexual or other, and that is where he strangled poor Lindsay before putting her, her body into the Rochdale Canal. We're going to talk a little bit now about the rumours circulating that obviously Lindsay came from a bit of a, a rowdy family, if you will, and that her father, Gordon, would quickly become one of the main suspects. Now, a lot of people seem to jump on the fact, like I said earlier, that he smirked on camera, but this was like a, a, a reflex. He always said that's how he dealt with pressure and things beyond his control. You know, he wasn't making lightheartedness of the fact his daughter was missing. You know, behind closed doors, like I said, Geraldine, his, his wife, she used to say that he was in tears, he was a broken man. But on camera and being interviewed by people, 
he didn't want to come across like that he, he wanted to put a braver face on and that was his mechanism we've all got different ways of dealing with stress and emotions but a lot of people and especially it seemed that a lot of locals seemed to think that because he had like a hippie persona you know like he he, he, he looked he looked like a hippie that's the only way i can explain it people just presumed and made up these horrible stories that Gordon had killed his own daughter and it's a sad state of affairs isn't it when people who are your own your own people your own townsfolk your own villagers can jump to conclusions such as that all because of the way you look or the way you dress or the way you speak it must have been horrific what Gordon went through obviously and the rest of his family but more so Gordon I would presume because like I said, he was being the target of victimisation, if you will. You know, people accusing him outright of being guilty and responsible for the disappearance of his daughter. I mean, I, as a father myself, I dread not only if anything ever happened to our children, but to be accused of being behind it. I mean, it must have been awful. Well, yeah, you're dealing with, the dis at the time, the disappearance because you didn't know what was that had happened to her. And then the fact that people are judging, saying you're the, the, you're the suspect. So you're up, you've got two sets of emotions going on there. Now, interestingly, on the 6th of November, just the day before Lindsay went missing, a stolen red Civic Honda was reported, um, like I said, being stolen from Leeds. Now, over in Hebden Bridge on the 7th, well, the 6th and the 7th and the 8th of November, witnesses came forward after Lindsay's disappearance, basically saying that a man in a red Civic Honda with a beard, had been pulling over and trying to get them into the car. Now, obviously, the red Civic Honda was tracked back to its owner in Leeds, and obviously they would have had an alibi at the time, one would presume. The car was stolen. It ended up here in Ebden Bridge. And the police put out an appeal for anybody seeing somebody matching the description of the driver of the stolen car. Now, a man would later be arrested in the months and I think it was a year or two after Lindsay's body was recovered from the canal and he was released on bail. And unfortunately, we can't find any other information about this character and why he was released and why no other further charges were put against him. So we can only assume he also may not have been the guy who had stolen the Civic Honda. It might just, this might have been another guy who resembled the description of the man seen in Hebden Bridge. Now obviously this type of disappearance and obviously a murder investigation, it's a still ongoing process. It's an unsolved murder. But at the time of researching this story, over 5,000 people had been interviewed by the police to their whereabouts, if they remembered anything on the evening of the 7th of November 1994. I think around four and a half thousand houses had been visited by the police and something like a thousand or 1,200 vehicles had been searched, you know, been investigated and looked into. Now this story, like I said, it's the first of many unsolved murders that we are gonna be going into, detailing. And we're doing these stories, not just for ourselves, me and Vicky, because we're interested in, like I said, these type of stories on these channels. But we're doing it to keep Lindsay and other people's memories alive in the hope that somebody, somewhere, will come forwards with information that may lead to the arrest of Lindsay's murderer or murderers. Now, we also believe that even to this day, there is somebody in Hebden Bridge that knows something. 
It may not be the actual person involved in the actual murder, the abduction of murder, but it might be somebody who knew the person who was responsible. And if that is the case, we ourselves are appealing for people to come forward and inform the police. Let's bring this story to an end. Um, there's a lot of whispering, there's a lot of whispers that goes on in stories such as this, yeah. which they don't help anybody. They just make the tale even worse for the parents of Lindsay. So if videos such as these can bring those guilty to justice and it finally gives the family closure, then we'll continue doing the videos such as this. So again, if there's anybody out there that may be watching this video or watching similar videos on the same story who know something, we do beg these people to come forwards. And even if it's just the slightest thing that you might think is, doesn't matter, still, because it could, it could be just that little jigsaw. It may be a 28 year old unsolved case, but to the parents of Lindsay Jo Reimer, it's like it happened just yesterday. Yeah. It's been going on for 28 years. They've never got closure. So like I said, it might be the slightest thing, like Vicky said, it might be the slightest thing mm -hmm. that you may just remember. You need to contact people. You need to get in touch with people and give them any information you may have on the disappearance of Lindsay Jo Reimer. And share this video because the people who were involved, and I am saying people because you don't know if it's one or two or three, they may have moved out of the area, so it could be anywhere. So share it out and get this story shared again, it, so people can actually, what's the word, um, bring it uh, Bring it to light again and keep, say, keep Lindsay's memory alive. And like I said, bring those responsible to justice. Because somebody knows something. Exactly. Now, the weeks leading, or the weeks after Lindsay's disappearance, the police did a reconstruction here in Ebden Centre, and it was Lindsay's sister that played the role of Lindsay herself. And they did this reconstruction and they televised it in the hope that it would jog people's memories. From all accounts, the police didn't seem to get much joy out of that. Now also, in regards to the Channel 4 documentary that took place, which was called Deadline, it seemed that a lot of tensions were risen, people were fraught with anger, and the police actually had to come out at times to tell the press and the TV crew to actually move away from the end of Cambridge Street because it was just upsetting the family even more. Uh, the family are getting very disturbed by seeing this amount of press, and they're uh, suggesting that we're hiding things from them, that we know things that we're not telling them. There'll be nothing happening here at all today, so I would prefer you not to be here. They've got other things that the family have to do today. Uh, I have to try and organise uh, the elder sister Kate to try and put her in the frame of mind to be able to do what we intend doing this evening. So I think they've got enough on the plate today. Okay. okay. Now today is Sunday. March the 19th, 2023, and it is a Mother's Day. Now, when we look into how long ago this murder took place, and it was roughly 28 years ago, that would put Lindsay into her early 40s. She could well have been a mother herself by now, but unfortunately her life was taken away from her at such a young age. She never got to experience all the things that mothers should experience. She never got to go on holidays with her own children. She never got to grow up with her children and teach them the ways of life herself. She never got to play with her own children. That hits home more, like I said, because today is a Mother's Day. 
so we hope that this video goes some way in finding closure for the family and relatives and friends of Lindsay in that if somebody does watch this video and it does just give somebody a bit of a a bit of a guilt trip if you will into coming forward with information that may lead to the arrest of the people guilty of Lindsay's disappearance and murder then we feel like we've done our job it's a sad story it really is and it's one that I hope the family do finally get closure with we've also tried to look where Lindsay possibly was buried so we could have taken some flowers unfortunately we've not been able to do so all we found out is that Lindsay and the family I should say they had a service in her memory and I think it was St James's Church in Hebden Bridge I'll put the name down below um, but apart from the service we do not know where if she was buried where Lindsay's grave is or else we would have visited it today to pay our final respects and like I said put some flowers down but if you've enjoyed this video if you remember this story if you know somebody who may be able to supply more information which could be important to the police comment down below if you do know anything contact the police directly in the meantime as i always say from this beautiful beautiful location here in ebden bridge we want you to take care of guys we want you to look after yourselves and we will be back soon with another tale from our dark but glorious past. Take care, everyone. Just my childhood. She was my childhood. Spent so many times together, so many days together. She was my best friend. She was the one who told me secrets to the one I grew up with, the one I scribbled in my notebooks with, the one I talked with in class. My best friend, she was my world. <laughs>